Okay. All right. Here we go. So everybody hang in. Ah, hey guys, thank you so much for jumping on. This is so funny because we know of each other, but not all of us have met. And um, I'm so happy to see you all and hear you all. So thanks for jumping on. Thanks for putting this together. Yeah, yeah. Every absolutely. time I use Zoom, I feel like the Brady Bunch. <laughs> so let's that go around okay. the squares and we can, hello, we can um, maybe just introduce ourselves. And since as I'm looking at it, you may be seeing it differently. Emily is kind of first. Um, would you start and just say the name of your show, who you are and where you, where you live and where you are? Very valid. So hi, I'm Emily. This is my voice. Uh, <laughs> I'm <laughs> half of Pancreas Pals podcast. I've been doing that fun little pod for around three and a half years now. Uh, the other half is Miriam, who is not with us today because she is busy therapizing people. And I am originally from Jacksonville, Florida, but I live in New York City. I have lived there for four years, but due to current events, I am hiding in Rhode Island social distancing wow. at my boyfriend's parents' house. Very grateful if they end up listening to this. Thank you for housing me. Wow. Oh, well, thank you for being here. Yes. So, all right. And I'm Stacy. I'm the host of Diabetes Connections. I've been doing that for four and a half years. And uh, my son is the one with type one. And we are all self quarantined all together. Happy times with the fam here in Charlotte, North Carolina. My kids would kill me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I ask, Emily, Emily, are you T1D? I am. Ah, okay, cool. I didn't know. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, bringing yeah, that we have, together. We have three adults with type one. I'm pointing like, um, like people are going to see this. <laughs> three adults with type one and two parents. And, and Mark, oh, here comes Ollie. I didn't know it was going to yes. say Mark. You're hey, hey, hey. Woo, perfect timing. Hey. Okay, <laughs> I was going to throw it over to Matt. You guys can, can introduce together maybe. Sweet. Uh, so my name is Matt Vandevecht, and I am one half of the Pardon My Pancreas podcast. I'll let Ollie speak next, I guess, so we can just kind of smooth into that. But um, I started a company called FTF Warrior, and then Ali actually came to me and was like, do we just start a podcast? And I was like, that's an awesome idea. So uh, I'm going to kick it over to Ali now. Uh, what's up, guys? My name is Ali Abdul Karim, and I have been a type 1 diabetic for about almost six years. And a while back, I felt like the diabetes community was pretty um, empty in a sense of content-wise. Like, there wasn't enough stuff that I wanted to see, like, in terms of exercise and mental health and yada, yada. So I started the Diabetes Daily Hustle vlog, and um, and the rest is history with, uh, at, at least with Matt, you know, coming up to him and <laughs> getting an idea for a podcast. Very cool. Well, thanks. I know we were just doing some technical stuff, so I'm glad you popped in when you did because we really just started recording. We're still doing the intros. I'm glad to see you. Thank you for having me. You got it. All right, Mark. You're up. Hi, I'm Marsha. <laughs> Brady Bunch. <laughs> there you go. Uh. <laughs> I'm actually realizing among the guys here that I am really like I'm falling behind when it comes to the facial hair. So Kurt's <laughs> my dog here, my Bernie's Mountain Dog. Oh my god! Is <laughs> that sitting right there this whole time? Oh, he's so not ready to go. <laughs> I groomed her earlier, so oh, it's gone. It's not going to stay. Anyway, that's no good for a podcast. So, um, so I am Mark. I am Mark Turner. I am um, obviously not from around these parts. Uh, originally from Arkansas. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm from the UK originally, but I've been in the States now for about 20 years. Wow. And I'm one half of the Dads and Diabetes podcast. Uh, my better half, Alan, unfortunately can't join today. He actually works in the financial markets. So uh, his world is on fire right now. Yeah. It's, um, it's I'm sure. Yeah, some of the texts we've been trading, I feel, I feel for him and for his clients. Anyhow, um, been doing the Dads and Diabetes podcast for about a year and a half, I think. Yeah, about a year and a half. Uh, my daughter, Ella, 12 years old, T1D, and Alan has a daughter, Anna, 13, T1D as well. So that's kind of what brought us together. And the reason we started the podcast is we felt like um, the moms within the T1D community, women in general, uh, were phenomenal. I mean, they were incredible in terms of, you know, kind of just grabbing the nettle and taking the lead. And Thank you for noticing. Up <laughs> yeah, so like Facebook groups and, ad, you know, just advocating. And, and the men were kind of in the slipstream, uh, either by 
by design or just through circumstance. Either way, we didn't think that maybe dads were as engaged in the conversations as they could be or needed to be. And so Alan and I were having a lot of conversations offline about what's going on with our kids and about the T1D community more broadly. And during one of our phone conversations, we said, you know what, we should make this a podcast. He and I both podcasted independently prior to this. And so uh, we kind of came together to try and create a, a place where dads could be heard and encourage other dads to speak. So Very that's cool. us. Awesome. And Rob on the, what? my lower left. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the lower left. Uh, what's up guys? Uh, I know all of you except Mark, but I'm excited to meet uh, Mark actually. I also identify as a Marsha in terms of Brady Bunch. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm also going to use Mark as an inspiration every time I get into a British character. Just saying the name Mark Turner is the name that brings me into uh, my, my best British accent. And my cat is actually trying to get into this room, I think. Uh, we, I'm in my uh, home office in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I've been type one for 15 years. And... Uh, you know, my claim to fame before podcasting and Instagram was I was a professional athlete, played most famously for the home, I guess the home Globetrotters as a member of the Washington Generals. Uh, and then five years ago about, uh, I came up with this idea in a hotel room in Columbia, kind of on a similar like quarantine kind of uh, situation where I wasn't allowed to leave the hotel room without my translator. And uh, cause I stand out like a sore thumb and Columbia can be dangerous. Uh, and so I came up with this idea to try to tell my story and help tell other people's stories through podcasting. So uh, awesome. here we are all these years <laughs> later. And, Your cat uh, is definitely trying to get in the yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Oh, what's your cat's uh, name? My cat's name is Michael J. Fox. He has a hive <laughs> of uh, big time fans on Instagram. So whenever he ends up in my content, uh, it's... Uh, it's gangbusters. They don't like me as much as they like him. I think that's the that's the truth. It, it really like should be. It really should it. be Michael J. F Feline, Mr. It, it could be. Uh, I wish I could take credit for his <laughs> name, uh, but I adopted him from a friend, and uh, his name came as advertised. And people like the formality. I think of Michael mm -hmm. Michael J. Fox. Like you know, his name is. He does not answer to Mike. He does not answer to anything else except the full Michael. So uh, you kind of have to respect his resolve a little bit. So he actually answers to his name. Oh yeah, yeah. He comes when he's called. Wow. Uh, he's a here oh. he is. Um, he's an interesting. Uh, oh. He's a good boy. I'm and allergic to cats, so that's yeah. Such a where nice are Shiba? Shiba Inus. Let's uh, let's get the dogs up in here. Right. <laughs> the Shibas are. Uh, Enzo actually drank a. I let Eric and I were reorganizing this room uh, earlier today, and I left my coffee on the coffee table, and Enzo drank a full cup of coffee. So he's <gasps> running around. Uh, the apartment like a wild maniac that he is so yeah the Love shiba inus it. we have two shiba inus rowan and enzo and they uh my fiance eric and i are living in a uh, apartment menagerie uh the last week so it's been a lot of fun wow so before we change the subject emily i don't know that you talk too much about pancreas pals i would just like to know a little bit more about how you guys oh. like why you started true um, you know how you found each other yeah so i originally started the podcast all right let me try and get my thoughts together here um okay so basically i was a senior in college and i had just been diagnosed i was diagnosed when i was 20 years old with type 1 and i had known no one with type 1 I, the only person i'd known was my next door neighbor who had actually unfortunately passed away from complications of oh type gosh. 1 so i was this ball of anxiety and really just i feel like you know that scene from carrie where she's running around with blood all over her hands like what's going on that was like me with diabetes <laughs> and i remember vividly i was in my senior multimedia journalism class at boston university just had diabetes just about a year at that point year and a half and um I was doing my final video project on the research that was being done with Dr. Damiano at BU, Boston University. And I was talking about my project and this girl all of a sudden like raised her hand, who's a peer. Now that I'm looking back at it, like I was just a year older than her, like she didn't need to raise her hand. Mm -hmm. her name was Christy and she was like, oh my God, I'm type one. And we became very fast friends. We didn't know anyone else with type one. And fast forward, we would, you know, text each other about carb counts or going on dates and struggling to uh, have a nice guy who understood that I just wanted to prick my finger in peace and that <laughs> didn't need to tell me that that's really unhygienic to do in public. Like, 
just wild times. Um, and we just really bonded over that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we, I graduated college and Christy was a year behind. So she, a year younger. So we would just call each other once a week and to catch up because I moved to New York and she was still in Boston. And one day I was like, we have got to start recording these because there are people that are like in Nebraska that do not have anyone who's type one, who's a female and can really discuss the highs and lows. Like, sorry, sorry, dudes, not to be a man hater. Love my boyfriend, love dudes. <laughs> but being a female with type one and the hormonal challenges that we go through is so much of a struggle. And I had no doctor be like, my all my male doctors just felt like, I don't know if they felt like they, they couldn't speak to it or they like didn't know of any patterns, but I just felt like it was such a gap that I, that she and I, we had no idea that it was normal to suffer from high blood sugars during our cycle or low blood sugars leading up. Like no one talked to us about that. And obviously our podcast is not about the menstruation cycle, but not pancreas pals in your period. Yeah, okay. That's, <laughs> that should be our next hashtag. Honestly, uh, that's great. Uh, it's disgusting. <laughs> I but would it's listen. Great. It's natural. It happens. It's um, sorry. Yeah, I, I wouldn't listen, but I have my daughter listen. There you yeah. see. <laughs> Thanks? Question mark. You should be there for your daughter. Anyways, um, you can do it's it. fine. Okay. Everything's fine. Um, so we started recording, it and it really took off. And ironically, really took off in Australia. Like we have. A Isn't that big funny? following in Australia? Hmm. And it brings so much like warmth to my heart. Like all these 16 year old girls are writing to us from all over the world. And I mean, our age range of listeners really is 85. Well, it's 18 to like 62 or something like that. So it's a big age range, but it's like 85% women. Like I'm not fooling myself. I don't think that a whole bunch of you know, 25 year old dudes really want to listen to Miriam and I talk, break down little things that happen in our lives and talk about the mental health aspect. So eventually Christy, my original co-host went back to school and got her graduate, is getting her graduate degree. And so Miriam, who was constantly on the show because she is a licensed mental health counselor talking about who has, she has type one as well. She's had it for 26 years, I believe. Um, yeah. She might kill me for saying that, but whatever. And so she's really gone through, gone through it and she went through puberty with it and she's just able to have this perspective of living a happy life with the challenges that face type one as a woman in the workforce in and out. And so have I. So we really focus on, you know, all the mental health aspects of type one right. with her kind of spearheading that. And then also, I've just always been such an open book. I could talk to a wall. It's probably a problem. <laughs> well, I think you're in good company. I have a feeling that everybody. <laughs> right. On this so I'm actually, today. I'm actually a fraternal twin. So um, she does not have type one, but she's been a, like, it's, it's great because a big chunk of our listeners are also caretakers or loved ones of type ones. So she's, she's been such a, um, oh my God, is that your daughter? What up? Hey, that was doing? so nice that she yeah, came in. Was. So yeah, she brought me a water. So. Well, tell her we said hi. We Hello, wanna... they say hi. I tell think that it's okay when she gets her period with type one. Tell her it's going to be okay. Because it's going to be any day now. I'm, I'm going to get your Tell him it's going to be okay. I'm sure she's <laughs> not going to be okay for Mark. It's going to be awful for him. Yeah. It's going to be worse for her. But <laughs> no doubt. I can't imagine being a dad and doing that, but um, <laughs> Moral of um, is it's it's been such a wild time. We were just featured in Women's Health for their March. Yeah, issue. congratulations! Thank you so much. Um, it's really exciting. A lot of exciting things coming up for season cool. seven, which drops in a few months. So we're uh, we're excited about all the all the kiddos and adults alike who are listening and caretakers. We get so many questions from people being like. My boyfriend has type one and he doesn't want to bring it up, but I see him giving himself shots and he never wants to talk about it, like things like that. And I'm like, well, I can't tell you what to do, but here's what I would do. And then Miriam's like, well, let's talk about why. Uh, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you can do that, Miriam. One thing I think is really interesting and I want to ask you all about is it's funny how when we enter the community, right? Either we're, we, people are diagnosed, like our kids are diagnosed or you're diagnosed and you, you kind of putter around by yourself for a little while or you jump right in. But whenever you find the diabetes community, it's at a different spot and you figure out what you want that isn't there. So I'll, let me go back to you and Matt, if I could, because, you know, you mentioned a couple of years ago, you didn't see what you wanted because I've been in the diabetes community since 2007 
when people were blogging and it was all about blogging and a couple of in-person events, but there was nothing, I mean, Facebook wasn't really a thing. Instagram certainly wasn't around. So give us the skinny on like when you jumped in and I don't want to put you and Matt in the same category, but feel free to, anybody can chime in. I mean, I'm just, I'm just here to keep the, the flow going. But, you know, I'm curious, what, what did it look like when you jumped in? Were you talking mostly on Instagram? There wasn't a lot of stuff? Um, I think what I think about was, was uh, YouTube at the time. Uh -huh. YouTube was very empty. I was heavy on YouTube before diagnosis. And then when I got diagnosed, I was like, how's weight training going to work? How's basketball going to work? Um, what stuff with inspiration from the culture of hip hop? And like, are there people I look up to that have diabetes? And all I found was like type two commercials on medications or just like random videos of how do you cure your diabetes, you know? And I was yeah. like, it's so empty. And then we're talking about in today's world, it's at a whole nother level. You know, we're seeing all these amazing podcasts, uh, Instagram, Facebook groups, bloggers, uh, YouTube blogs are just nonstop, which is amazing to see. And it's pretty much the work is done, but there's always another uh, level of contribution we can all make. Rob, I'm going to ask you to jump in too, because you had, um, you know, I've, I've joked about, about this with him that when I'm like, not sure how to use Instagram, I'm like, Rob, what do I do? <laughs> because you just seem like you have that. I don't want to, I don't want to sound weird, but like, it, you know, you guys have a mastery of different social media aspects. So I'm curious, Rob, when you decided to get involved, you were already, I mean, with advertising and with the stuff you'd already done, you've been pretty heavily involved. What did it look like to you? What did you want to add? Yeah. So great question. And, uh, I will say to the listeners, like I, uh, Stacy asked great questions, uh, which you guys know if you listen to her podcast. But uh, I'm I'm totally here as her official Instagram liaison. So uh, whatever whatever her questions are, I'm here. I'm going to be her resource. So um, my 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 thing was a little bit different. Um, I was in a position where I was, uh, like Stacy mentioned, I work in advertising. I own my own agency now. Uh, but back then, I worked for an agency. I was the director of strategy and. Uh, I don't know. I was I was really interested in a lot of platforms, but Instagram is the one I think that resonated most with me. I think it's just really cool. I love photography, videography, and uh, I'm just really inspired by the variety of creativity that I see on there, in and out of diabetes. I think specifically this group is is one. Uh, the Instagram kids, as we would be, I guess, in this category, are uh, all people that I follow and interact with on a regular basis because of what they do, and I think. Uh, a little bit similar to Ali, I was like, hmm, there is a gap in Instagram and also similar to, you know, what everybody's really said. Uh, Mark earlier uh, specifically was talking about how inspiring all the women are uh, in the diabetes space. And at the time, certainly there are much more uh, involved dudes uh, these days, but I was like, wow, there's uh, a serious need for a male diabetes influencer uh, or a diabetes personality or uh, you know, fit in just general lifestyle type person. So uh, a lot of those gaps that Ollie was describing were the ones that I checked the box on. I was like, hmm, maybe my story and my life uh, in general could just be inspiration or I could, you know, opt into a community. So I decided early on that I was going to use Instagram as my primary uh, promotional platform for the podcast. It has a Facebook and it had, but you know, organic reach being what it was. And I wasn't really interested in doing like a Facebook group because I didn't think I had the time to really spend to make it great. So I was like, okay, well, Instagram could be a great platform for this. And they added direct messaging along, along that timeline as well. And so it's like became this more, much more communal story kind of platform. So, uh, yeah, those are my, Instagram is my primary platform that I spend most of my life on, <laughs> uh, which, uh, I have like the alerts that tell me like when I spend an hour on there every day and I try to like <laughs> use that and like lately uh, social distancing yeah. I've been getting that like in the morning. Um, Turn that off. Oh, like I got, I got, a, <laughs> got a lot of time spent right now. So uh, yeah, I think that was my uh, Instagram was a place where I found community and I found a lot of people like me and uh, I, I didn't know what it was like for the first 10 years that I had diabetes, what it was like to have friends with diabetes. It was not something that I thought I needed. Uh, and something that I learned and that I say pretty regularly now is that people are diagnosed, I believe people are diagnosed twice, once when the doctor tells them and once when they take ownership of that and opt into that uh, and say, hey, yeah, I do have diabetes. What else is out there for me? And uh, I for certainly have seen that in my own life. And I see that a lot with people these days, like I'm sure you guys as well. Uh, a new diabetes account follows me every day. 
<laughs> and it's like, yeah, I see somebody else who is sort of reconciling and opting into their own journey with diabetes. So it's very cool to see. And I, and I love meeting people along that journey. That's cool. All right. I'm going to change, even though Mark and Matt, I know you're probably planning your answer to that question. So sorry. Yeah. We're going to move on to something else. Um, I'm curious. Okay. So I'll set this one up and give you a second to think about it, but I want to do it. I'll ping pong around everybody. A quick round robin, as we call it in the news business. But let's do um, a quick question on what is what do people find surprising about podcasting? Because I know we've all had, I mean, not diabetes wise, but just for fun. I know we have people in our lives that we're like, we're podcasters. And they say, what are you doing? Or how's your little podcast going? So, you know, if you have a, a, anything surprising uh, to share about your experience with podcasting or something that you tell people, I will share. I did news talk radio for a very long time. And none of my friends ever understood what that was. They would introduce me as the DJ. Or, you know, it was really, right, because you guys know me. Why didn't they listen to you? You, you just listen and you figure it out. Well, Emily, I I'd love I to hear worked. the Stacey Stim show. And the hot eight is June. Just coming out. <laughs> it was, all the hits all the time. Here's why they didn't listen, Emily, because I worked at News Talk 1110 WBT, which is the right-leaning political talk station okay. in Charlotte. So I did morning Fair news enough. for 10 years, which was not political at all. I mean, we interviewed politicians. But. My, my friends were mostly listening to, you know, the hot AC, adult contemporary, the hot AC uh, station, you know, the crazy morning zoo or whatever. And I knew growing up that I didn't want to be the giggle girl. I mean, I'm old enough that that's all the job there was that, you know, you could be Robin Quivers, maybe, right? But you couldn't be the main guy. So that's not what I wanted to do. So I grew up and be, I became a news person. But when I started podcasting, people were like, how's your pod blog thing? How's your, what's your, can I hear it on my phone? Or a lot of people will come up to me now at diabetes conferences and say, I would love to listen to your podcast, but I can never find time to watch it. And then you have to explain <laughs> still. So uh, Mark, I'm going to go to you because we're of similar ages. And I would imagine that you've heard that as well. What's, what's something about podcasting you can share? I think the thing that surprises people most when I tell them my podcast. So this is my fourth podcast that I've been involved in. And I think that inherently surprises people. But I think what really shocks them is just how easy it is to yeah. podcast. I think that completely blind science. When, they, when you tell someone you're a podcaster, you can almost they get stars in their eyes like oh my god you podcast wow it's like, this is not alchemy this is literally if you want it's an iphone and a rudimentary recording app i mean obviously we all do a little more than that but um it's pretty straightforward so i think um that's certainly something that surprises people and it's something that i make a point to jump on because i want to encourage others you know yeah. if they have content that they want to capture if they have something that they're passionate about that's the key i mean the key is be passionate get on mic and um, fulfill your commitments to your audience. If you say you're going to do it once a month, you say you're going to do it twice a month, every week, whatever it might be, adhere to that. And if you do, you'll probably, you'll probably generate some kind of an audience. So whenever people, you know, when I see that kind of like far away look in their eyes, like my gosh, podcasting, that's just, I, I don't know. No, seriously, embrace this. You can do this. It's easy. Yeah. I don't think you should tell anybody else they should do a podcast. <laughs> well, not about diabetes. I mean, <laughs> no, clearly the market's <laughs> crowded enough. There so. are a million podcasts now. When well, yeah. started, I feel like it was like oh, sorry, you, I... me, and Rob. And now it's like I get podcasts following me every day that are type 1 diabetes podcasts. And I'm I like, think it, I do think it's great. I'm, I'm really kidding. No, it's every... great. There's so many. There, we all have a voice. We all have a perspective. It's Everybody just, has it's, a story. Yeah. We're, I'm not, just like, we're not all authors though, Stacey. <sighs> Yeah, we don't, not all of us hit, you know, True. did the news every morning and have a voice like, I feel like I could listen to you like all the time. Your voice is very calming. Mm -hmm. Daisy is like the, the most professional podcaster that I know. So <laughs> I'm actually was, I'm so that. thankful because a minute ago when Mark was talking, I was thinking I have messed up this group meeting so much by trying to make it more formal, but I cannot help myself. It's, it's how good. I am. I'm like, yeah, you messed anything are. up. And no, poor Matt. Not for this negativity. Mm -mm. We, we have to get to Matt. Matt, you've been, <laughs> we've been we've going around. I'm just enjoying watching this whole thing unfold. It's been Hi. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all for the kind words. But Matt, can you talk about podcasting? Yeah, what, for what sure. Enjoy about it? I think Mark touched on a great point, which was that it's so easy to get started, like way easier than I thought it would be. You know, I thought I had to get, when I first was shopping for podcast gear, I was looking at mixers and different yeah. editing softwares and, yeah, you literally need a phone and a recording device of some sort. It's pretty much it. But 
it gets difficult being consistent. That's where a lot of people fall off. So starting up, super yeah. easy. You know, you can buy some cheap equipment and it totally sounds fine, but consistency, you know, like you say, if you're promising a month, once a month, once a week, that's where it gets tough. Because if you're not consistent, it's gonna fall apart and you're not gonna be able to keep it going. And I think that's my biggest contribution. I'm the insight guy. I love developing, diving into data and insights and blah, 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 consumer behavior, boring. But um, I think that an insight that I had going into the podcast, and this is back in 2015, um, at the time, 90% uh, of all podcasts on iTunes had three episodes or fewer. So yeah. people get super gung-ho like Matt's talking about. They get their setup going, they get their concept, and then they stop because life gets busy and it's just like a side project. Um, and I think too, like they come in with this expectation that a lot of people are going to download it. And as you guys know, like your first couple episodes, like, you know, you have good friends or whatever, and they support you. But for the most part at the beginning, not very many people download it. Um, and so there is like, like an, uh, an effort of consistency. There's some Sheba nightmare going on. I was on. like, that's your dog. <laughs> um, but the apocalypse is a force for me. <laughs> they know something we don't. Um, but then the other thing is I read this uh, insight from Spotify at the end of the year that number of podcasts on Spotify increased 1,000% from 2018 to 2019. So what you're talking about is the barriers to entry for podcasts are much fewer than they were even a few years ago. I remember my like workflow that I built uh, so that I could you know call people on Skype and record into GarageBand or whatever uh, is pretty much not necessary anymore. Like even uh, the part of my pancreas guys, Zencaster, which is super easy to use and any, any idiot with an internet connection could use. And I am just like, wow, I wish this was around five years ago so I could build my workflow around <laughs> it. Uh, so I think it's an awesome time. If you have a, if you have an idea or even just like a serial idea or just like a, a project or a friend that you want to collaborate with that is available to you. And I love seeing new diabetes podcasts. I think, uh, my idea on competition in the diabetes space is very different uh, and people are like Rob no dude it's a dog eat dog world and I agree with that except that dogs don't eat other dogs for the most part so <laughs> it doesn't make sense uh, so I think that, you know this is like everybody has a voice if you have an idea or creative uh, you know opportunity or just something burning inside you I think you should get it out there and I'm here to support that hey can I ask a quick question do you think and seriously with it, this whole coronavirus yeah. thing are you expecting an exponential growth in podcasts over the next couple of months? Because people are going to be sat in guest rooms as we are. Yeah. Interesting I've already question. seen it. <laughs> I've yeah. already yeah. seen it. I've already yeah. seen like an increase just in the followers in terms of like new crea new accounts created for podcasts. But you know what's funny? I, I would think more people are going to be creating podcasts. And I actually do a presentation. Uh, I did it for college students a couple of years back called Can I Podcast from My Dorm Room? And I've been asked to expand that and, and do the presentation more, which I will do. And I think we're going to see lots of podcasts. I think we're actually going to see fewer listeners because mm -hmm. as we all are now isolated with our families, um, I don't know, I know some of you are single, some, I, don't know what, I don't know anybody's status, but I'm at home with, with now my son, my daughter, and my husband. I do not listen to podcasts with them. It's not, really a, it's not really a communal listening in, you know, a medium. Mm -hmm. Some shows are, but like my son is 15 and has type 1. I don't think he would ever listen to a diabetes podcast that I would listen to, right? He might listen to his own, but it's not like, let's sit down and gather around the fire and listen to, you know, <laughs> even, you know, let's listen to any kind of podcast. So I'm, be, I'm really interested to see what happens. I think there's going to be a lot of people creating them, but I don't know about communal listening with podcasting because I don't know about you guys. I, uh, you know, I'm on Alexa or on, I don't want to wake anybody's devices up, but you know, we're all on those <laughs> devices now. And I have like three people who listen that way. It's very interesting because I just don't think it's a communal medium, but maybe that's just my show. <laughs> that's very true. No, I listen to podcasts when I'm alone. If I'm in yeah. the car, if I'm at the gym, if you're with people, it's just weird. You know, yeah. most yeah. people don't have the same taste in podcasts anyways. It also feels more intimate. Like the podcast, it's like, right. it's not like a YouTube video where everyone's gathering around and usually there's a whole bunch of people coming in and out. This is the biggest podcast I've ever recorded with this many people on at once. It's hard to discern oh. different voices for me, at least. I mean, the most I've done, I think is like four or five. I'm not good at counting, but I think there's more of us than that. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's also a part of it. A good chunk of it is it's kind of an intimate experience. And no matter what you're discussing, it feels very one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Audio is the most intimate medium for sure, because you've got somebody's voice right in your head. You know, that's well, why radio I, I, is so great. Good. Ali. Also, I think about it in a sense, um, 
it's also time buying. You know, you do podcasts while you're working out or driving or cleaning. You're not doing podcasts sitting there and you have to take up an hour and, and block it out of your schedule. And that's, that's also the beauty of it as well. Yeah, I, I agree with Ali like completely. I think when I started my own business, I, uh, our offices are much closer to where I live than when I worked for somebody else. Uh, cause I chose it that way. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, so my commute and, uh, my time, I used to crush audiobooks because my commute was like 35 minutes each way. So I could read like a hundred books a year easily just on my commute. And, um, you know, so now that was also a time when I would listen to podcasts. Uh, so my question for the group is outside of diabetes, uh, and talking about our own podcast, what podcasts do you listen to? Oh my God, I have 5,000. Can I go first? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to podcasts since you had to put them on your iPod, like plug it into the computer. And, you know, I had like the iPod Nano or whatever, or I would steal it from my kids and I would download it. So I started listening to NPR's Fresh Air, which is actually what my show is based on. Mine is more of a news, news diabetes podcast. Um, but I love, I'm, my favorite show right now is You're Wrong About. Um, You're Wrong About is where they revisit news stories from, you know, like the 80s and 90s and tell you what you missed about them. Um, I love any, there's a bunch of Game of Thrones podcasts. I'm a huge A Song of Ice and Fire fan. Read the books if you're stuck Binge at home. Read the books, read the books. Yeah, you don't have to watch the show. The show's fine. Read the books. So I like History of Westeros, Radio Westeros. You will never feel like more of a nerd than when you listen to these shows. They do dramatic readings and all that stuff. It's really fun. Um, Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend always makes me laugh. And um, how did this get made? Will always mm. make me laugh. So those are just a few that I like. I could go on and on. I have way too many. Um, let me set up. Matt, when I'll, I'll kick it over to you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I've got a short list. So this won't take very long. <laughs> um, I would say that everything that I consume, especially through podcasts, is educational for my own growth as a person or as a business. Now I feel and bad. So, <laughs> That's not don't, don't, don't. Don't but hey, not like I said, when we were chatting really earlier, I spent, I spent hours on TikTok. So I'm not just educational. Okay. <laughs> I, I would done a black hole of entertainment there, but with podcasts, it's marketing. It's how to help people with your value. So uh, I didn't get, I forgot to share my story in the beginning. So I guess I'll share part of that now. Um, I've had diabetes for 10 years and along that path, I became a certified personal trainer and nutritionist. And so my goal is to use that to help people. So I use podcasts to teach me how to relay that information to others. And so it's kind of, that's why I use it as like a self growth at the gym or while I'm driving. It's great for that. You know, you can't do that in a group because no one else cares. <laughs> so what do you like? This is pretty much what I listen to. What's that? Do you have a couple shows you can share? Oh man, let's see. There's this guy named Russell Brunson. He's got a great one. It's called Marketing Secrets from Your Car, I think it is. And he just podcasts while he's driving. He talks about ease of entrance. He gets his cell phone and records himself while he's driving to work every day. That's Mom disapproves. It. And he uploads not, it. No, that's dangerous. Mom does not approve. <laughs> <Nasty> note. <laughs> oh man. This, yeah, this pod's going to come with the warning go. now for stakes right. and House warning. Yeah. <laughs> do not do that, people. Ali, how about you? Um, I would say my favorite are my favorites are Lewis Howe's School of Greatness. I love his uh, intimate interviews where it's like you know what to expect. Like who are you? What's your story? And then here's the meat and potatoes. And then what's your message to everyone? That that's one of my favorite podcasts. And then also uh, Gary Vee's um, audio experience. Yeah. I love Gary Vee, and those are my top two. Mark, how about you? Uh, I'll go a little different here because I think all of these are going to be US centric. So instead I'm going to, I've got football, loads football, 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 a half a minor soccer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, goes without saying, but I'm scrolling through my list here and I'm going to exclusively gravitate to those that are from the UK and that way maybe you guys won't have heard of them. So, um, probably one of my most favoritist is a show called Desert Island Discs. It's actually the longest running radio show in the world. I think it's 75 years old at this point. What? Wow. Really super simple format. They have a celebrity on or somebody who's just you know, significant in their particular field, history, uh, science, whatever it may be. And it's a 45 minute long show. And they ask that individual, okay, you're going to be stranded on a desert, uh, desert island. So what are the eight discs that you would take with you? There mm -hmm. were discs back in the day. It was gramophone records. 
and you have to pick out eight pieces of music that you would take with you and you talk you know you talk about why that's uh, important to you and if it relates to a particular person and and you kind of learn about that individual and i just got done listening to daniel radcliffe and prior to that ricky gervais really really interesting and some of them oh, are super great. emotional so desert island discs one definitely worth checking uh what's this one here diabetes connections with no i don't know <laughs> i'll listen to that one uh, <laughs> <laughs> um there's one called the infinite monkey cage for any of you who are kind of science nerds this is a show that's hosted by a comedian and brian cox no not that brian cox the scientist brian cox oh. uh who's very well known in the uk super super brilliant smart guy the two of them come together they uh gather together a panel and they discuss a scientific topic but it's kind of done very lightheartedly, and it's just really interesting the stuff you learn kind of by osmosis like oh i don't want to learn about science that's but, yeah, great it's pretty interesting things because of how they format the show and let me give you one more this is an amazing tv show in england called qi which stands for quite interesting and it was until recently hosted by my favorite person on the planet stephen fry who's just freaking amazing at everything he does um anyhow uh the people who produce the questions for that show they're called the qi owls they produce their own podcast which has a, a weird title it's called no such thing as a fish hmm. basically each of the elves there are three of them they take a kind of what you're saying stacy they take something that we misunderstand something that just over over time we come to believe and it isn't actually what it seems and they delve into it and they kind of give you the history behind it and they kind of correct the the myth if you like and it's just nice. really interesting again the stuff you can learn from it is fascinating so they're all from the uk um there you go Excellent. All right, Rob, you're next. Uh, great. So I think my favorite podcast and one that I think I model my show after a lot is Tim Ferriss show, the Tim mm. Ferriss show. Um, just really in-depth, long form, kind of unstructured interviews with uh, high performers and really cool, interesting people. Uh, his episodes are super long too. So I find that like the first hour generally is generally the same and kind of they kind of get into it and then as people get more comfortable and kind of he breaks them down a little bit maybe they the last hour uh, or two hours are generally really interesting and kind of uh, vary in in their content which is really cool uh i occasionally will listen to a joe rogan episode i think like i admire his podcast enthusiasm and hustle he can get anybody on that show and puts out a ton a ton a ton of content uh, which is really good um, and then I also have on the movies side, I love movies. Uh, so I love the rewatchables podcast, uh, from the ringer. Uh, I also like binge mode, which covers like a variety of topics from Harry Potter to game of Thrones to star Wars, oh, nice. uh, which is really good as well from the ringer. The ringer does a really awesome job. Uh, yeah. and has a lot of really cool pods. Um, then I'm trying to think of, uh, some other kind of one-offs that I listen to on a regular basis. God, I had these, uh, like on my <laughs> phone ready to go. And now they're, they're slipping my mind. Um, I like the After Hours Harvard Business Review pod, which is pretty cool. Sure uh, you do. Short. Come on. you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Think of one. They, Let's go to Harvard. <laughs> yeah. And, they, uh, and, and then I also um, listen to, by proxy of my fiance, who likes to listen to true crime pods oh. uh, in the house. Uh, even so, like, I can actually hear them in the hallway. Before, she usually gets home before I do. So uh, I can hear them in the hallway. And they are Sinisterhood, which is a, a local podcast which has actually uh, gone pretty big uh, recently from a couple of friends of mine here. It's true crime and comedy, as well as My Favorite Murder, which is just a, a hilarious podcast from two ultra-powerful ladies. So, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of the, uh, those are, that's the scope of my cool. podcasts that I'm listening to, at least right now. Emily, were you going to say My Favorite Murder? Yeah, I saw your reaction. There. My Favorite Murder is also one of my top, but I really am into anything true crime, whether mm. that's on Netflix or a podcast. Obviously, Serial and PR was kind of like my first foray into listening to true crime podcasts. Same. And it was so, it's so good. I mean, like, I hate saying that because it's like true crime, so like not that good on like an <laughs> ethical and human level, but so good to to take in content wise. Um, and then my other favorite is called Mortified. I don't know if any of y'all have heard of it, but it's hilarious. It's people reading their diary entries, like as adults. From when they were kids. From when they were kids. And huh. I- oh, That sounds awesome. I've never laughed out loud harder. Like I, I had to stop listening to it at work because people were like, you good. Like it, <laughs> it's so funny. And they're just the most mortifying, like like the title. Oh, I have. I've been meaning to stories, like, that one would recommend it's there's it's pretty 
pretty short format and there's usually two diary entries per episode. So it's two different stories. Some of them are sad and cringy, but most of, well, all of them are cringy, but most of them are hilarious. (laughs) That's awesome. Are you guys familiar with Adrian Mole? I don't think so. Anyone heard of Adrian Mole? Okay. It, when you said about Mortified, it reminded me of it. It's a series of books I wrote when I was a kid and they became a TV show in the UK. You guys need to check them out. You in particular, Emily. It's fantastic. Uh, it's actually a woman, Sue Townsend, who writes from the perspective of a 13-year-old boy. Yeah, she oh. died recently, unfortunately, oh. of cancer. But, um, and she just captures the mind of a 13-year-old boy so perfectly. And it's hilarious. It's, it's done in the form of diaries. So it's okay. his diaries as a 13-year-old boy. And it's just fantastic. Adrian Mole, check it out. Cool. All right. Well, listen, we, I think it's time to kind of wrap it up here. It's been an awesome chat. And I know we could keep going. And hopefully we'll jump back on and do this again really soon. Anybody have anything I missed? I know we could talk for a long time here. I think next um, thing we'll do a round robin on what mic everyone's using. I'm very curious. Sorry, Robin. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah I think... Uh... Something I would get if you're if you've stuck with this episode to this to this <laughs> point, uh, first of all, props to you. Uh, but you know, if you have an idea for a podcast or you feel compelled to give back to the community in some way or express yourself creatively, I think we all could probably do an hour long episode solo on why someone should do that oh, and yes. why your projects matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Don't compare your day one to just somebody else's day one thousand. Um, yeah, a hundred. I think a comparison can really rob you of your creativity and your joy. Uh, so, you know, each of these people, uh, and Mark, I'm looking forward to learning more about you, uh, and getting to know you a little bit better, but, uh, each of these people have had an impact on my life in one way or another. And I'm uh, very fortunate to have met every one of you except Mark in person. So, uh, you never know where your creative project or your harebrained scheme or idea will take you. Uh, and I would encourage you guys to, if you have one of those, uh, to chase it, it may not work. It doesn't matter. Uh, but you pouring yourself into that will make a difference to someone somewhere. And I am living proof of that. So I uh, just wanted to thank each one of you for, uh, giving that to me. I also want to jump in and say this happened not because of, you know, like leadership and I called people. It happened because I felt like reaching out and, and just talking to people with similar circumstances. And if you're listening, and God bless you if you're listening this far, if you are still listening though, and you're interested, you can do this. Just instant message or reach out or however, it, it really does not take um, being a radio professional I mean, you know, no, 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 I think I'm the only one, right? It doesn't matter. You don't have to do any of that. If you have an idea, if you have a, a suggestion, I think any of us would help with that. And I hope that anybody here on this panel, this panel, I'm calling it very loosely, but if you guys want to do this with other podcasters that you know, this isn't, we just kind of went randomly and said, who's around? So if you, please, let's keep talking. Let's keep meeting each other. We got to do something over the next couple of weeks. I mean, we really need to stay connected. Emily, you look so halo-ish and beautiful. Are you? Thank you. It's it's the Rhode Island air and literally Ah. there's windows all around, guys. Like, look at the ocean back there. It's just. Oh, Oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. It's that cool. is really it's good. Really, really so, really Stacy, nice. that, that really wasn't an accurate description. Uh, Stacy's Captain America, and basically, this is <laughs> Stacy's Avengers Assemble. That, that's what, that's what he's a Marvel nerd as well. So, <laughs> the Hulk is right behind <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. so before, Jackson, before we meet next, everyone. before we meet next, we need to determine which Avenger would we all be. Okay, so I'm going to give Stacy <laughs> Captain America because she's the leader. <laughs> But the rest of us need to come up with our own designations. All right. Well, we'll report back on that at next. And if you want to go DC, <laughs> we might let you back in the club. We yeah, might not. Oh, we'll wow. Uh, <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll Matt, see. I'll be Robin. It's going to say we're going to have to fight over Batman. <laughs> That's hysterical. You guys, thank you all so much. Um, we'll, we'll figure out off the air how we're going to get this to anybody or how people are going to hear it. But this was a blast. Thank you so much for picking up the phone and, and opening the, I don't know, what do we even say? Opening the computer, jumping in on Zoom. Brave New World. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. For me. Thanks, everybody. Bye.